Yo, yo, yo. We're here. Hey. Doing things. Hey. Doing things with House of Korea. <laughs> Doing things with House of Korea. Episode two. Give it the bucks. Here we go. I just made a song right off the cuff, you guys. What do you think? Is it, is it going to stick? Should we do that for every episode? Uh, yeah. I, we're just, I can it. keep refining it. I can deliver new versions if you want. This is, you know, it comes with the with the Stimulus TV package service. We do custom theme songs. So, you guys, let me know if you like that one. I can keep working on it. I can deliver new options tomorrow. You guys let me know. <laughs> Like a compilation video where we're like, we look up and we smile. <laughs> <laughs> it is episode two of Doing Things with House of Korea. Um, I think we've got some some new viewers today. So I'm going to ask you um, again to tell us a little bit about um, what House of Korea is and what you guys do and who you guys are. And um, before we get started, let us know. All right. I'm Carrie Ann Korea. And... House of Korea is a really awesome sustainable fashion brand uh, and we specialize in giving new life to old products um, like the sunnies on my face. These are some of our little pink guys and I adorn them with vintage jewelry. And Love today them. we have Sydney Oz. Hello. Hey Sydney. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice and to meet you. <laughs> um, I'm here with Carrie Ann, and I don't know. I'm part of the crew, and we are here to do some crafting today. Um, we're all about recycling and reusing things. So today we're going to make a shopping bag, a reusable shopping bag, out of an old T-shirt. That is awesome. They just banned plastic shopping bags in New York, and it's really annoying, and I need bags to get my things with, and so this is going to be super helpful for me, especially. Totally, and I think what's really exciting about this specifically is, so on our side, um, I live in the Bay Area, and California banned bags, plastic bags, a couple years ago at this point now, so we're all deep in the reusable bags, and now going on with all of this going on, all of the um, grocery stores are banning reusable bags because they're afraid of the virus. So oh, now we're kind of like, that yesterday, we're like, what do we do? <laughs> yeah. So some stores are letting you bag your own groceries, but like, you know what? That aside, we want to be able to wash these things. And a lot of our reusable bags are not washable, right? So I really started getting rid of those like plasticky ones that are hard to wash. You have to wipe down and just doing like canvas and or a t-shirt that you can literally just throw in the in hot water and bleach, right? So like you can literally have, I'm sure, you know, everybody has like that drawer full of like paint, paint and like stained t-shirts they don't care about, like make a couple of bags and you can use them once and then wash them, right? And like keep them in a plastic bag somewhere. And it's really easy. So I don't know. It's kind of like a no. great, yeah. That's amazing. Wait, so so if so if they ban plastic bags and you can't bring reusable bags, seriously, what are people doing in California right now? Do you have to like know how to juggle to bring home your groceries? <laughs> like, that, is that a good thing? Well, one thing is that our grocery stores are only allowing us to buy one item of everything. So like, it's not like you're bulking up anyway. <laughs> Wait, of everything? So like one apple at a time? Yes. It's pretty, so like they have bags of apples, right? But um, yeah, it's getting pretty intense. So there's that. But also um, we have, you know, like what's really funny is that like suddenly Safeway has just like a resurrection of plastic bags and you're like, wow, where, where did these come from? This whole <laughs> <time>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, black market bag selection. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and you could, there's also a little bit of a hustle to this because, you know, you could buy bags before they used to be 10 cents. They went up to 20 cents in 2020. <laughs> and now, now they're like, you want a bag? Okay. 20 cents. So it's like you have to buy bags there. I don't, yeah. Fortunately, my Safeway is still letting me bag my own groceries if I have a reusable bag. So they kind of all just like jump away when I pull it out. And then I just bag my own groceries and run away. So it's fine. <laughs> You're a rebel. You're a rebel. Yeah. But still, you know, like you've been through this grocery store touching and doing all the things like you bring this home and you're like, I don't want to bring this back into my apartment, <laughs> you know? 
So it makes me feel like I've definitely, I've been using more canvas ones, but it's nice to be able to like bleach it and not, you know, like not care. Like at the end of this, when this is over or like this starts to slow down, you can throw these away or they start to rip, they start to get gross, throw them away. Right? Yeah, because so, we've all got extra Yeah, exactly. So, so I have my so, whole, yeah. Okay, sorry. What are we, we going to need? What are we going to need to uh, to follow along with this? So what are the materials we're going to need? We have an old t-shirt here. Um, doesn't have to be long sleeve. Mine just happens to be. And um, I have two scissors, preferably good sharp ones, but anything will do or something to cut. Um, I have a, my cutting board just because I usually work on it. You can use a rotary cutter if you want, which is this little fun thing. This is your time to really pull out all of those tools that somebody gifted you or you got from your grandma at some point. Um, my, my grandma never gave me a rotary cutter ever. No, well, I have three. <laughs> but if you want one, I can be your grandma. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and um, I have a needle. Of, <clears throat> sorry, a needle and thread. I'll teach you how to make them hand sewing. But I also have my sewing machine that we can, you know, cover. But it's very simple, and there's very little sewing. So since we have some time, I'll probably hand sew. Oh, and that's okay. it. I have a I have one question right off the bat. Yes. How did you select that specific shirt? Because honestly, I love it. It's a really awesome shirt. And that is like personally, I just wouldn't choose that shirt to turn into a bag. I would just wear it. I love it. But um, how did you go about selecting this shirt today? Well, since I've worked in a lot of streetwear, I have a plethora of t-shirts. It was a very hard choice, to be honest. And I spent a lot of time deciding which one I was going to cut up. I had a really old stained Billionaire Boys Club one, but I still, I can't cut that one yet. So this one is stained as well. And um, to be honest, this was the one. Like, this is my my rattiest one at, the, at this point, which, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll show you some collections. Yeah. Of <laughs> <laughs> to be real. But, I mean, you know, the, I'll still use it, right? It'll be in a bag. It'll be a bag form, and everyone can. In, it's, it's not actually from 1980, so don't feel bad. It's uh, like, you know, a new age one. It's from Chubby's. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry. It's not like vintage. No, I wouldn't do that to you. Also, old vintage shirts aren't going to be ideal for this. You want kind of like, you know, what would be ideal like your undershirts, probably like white yeah. tees. You know, like a lot of people only wear them a few times. You know, so like, wear them, cut them up, make them bags. You bleach them. You don't care about them. It's perfect. Would a sleeveless t-shirt work as well? Or does it need to be a, a t-shirt? Yeah. So when you see how it's made, you will see that a tank top would work perfect. It's like probably even stronger if you use a tank top. I wouldn't use like the thin like undershirt ones, but like, yeah, like, Thanks. yeah, like a tank, like a true like t-shirt jersey tank. Like those would be perfect, actually. You're okay. going to see that it's pretty simple. So, um. So yeah, the I have, um, I guess we can start. I have a little diagram that I'm gonna show you guys just to like give you an idea, just cause like you don't get an aerial view specifically. So I just wanna like show you before I start, but I've drawn like a little t-shirt here. And the really the big, the thing you wanna do is you wanna like lay it flat and we're gonna be cutting the armholes. And then we're gonna be cutting the neckline here. Okay. Are you okay. cutting it like on the seam, Sid? Or like a little lower? I would cut it on the body side. So like the main body part of okay. the seams, right? So just under the next seam and, you know, just to the side on the inside of the armholes. So I'll wait here. Let me make sure. Let me see if I can like get you guys a good angle. So you can. So I think like laying it flat is ideal. Okay. Yeah. Sid, I'm just going to stop you for a second. That notebook that you drew that t-shirt in, I want to do a whole episode on that notebook. Okay. It looks like filled with really exciting, fun things. <laughs> yeah. Like all secrets. I don't know. <laughs> all the secrets. All the secrets. <laughs> oh god my mom is already razzing me here on on the chats 
Mom, um, I, it's oh, allergies. Janice. I just have allergies. I've been wearing my face mask, Mom. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so we want to lay this out. I'm going to start okay. with this one armhole. So again, like here's the seam, here's the sleeve side. I'm going to cut just to the inside, just to cut, we're going to cut away all of the nonsense that's there. So it's like the seam allowance inside. I'm going to go. I'll use probably this for like cleaning since we do lots of cleaning these days. Cool. <laughs> <You're funny. laughs> okay, okay then you do the same thing to the other side, Sid? Yeah, so then we're going to switch to the other side and just like lay it out flat. Pat, pat, pat. Cut. Again, we're cutting on the inside of the seam. All right. So at this point, I think, so I also, there's probably like, you know, mine has like some like seam allowance, like scoop that's hanging out. So I'll probably just cut that away because that's just, there's no reason for that. And like, what's the seam allowance in? Like, what is that considered on here? Okay, so the definition of seam allowance is when you're sewing, you put two pieces of fabric together and you stitch, and there's a little bit of extra that you leave on the stitch between the stitch line and the cut line, mm -hmm. and that is called seam allowance. Mm -hmm. So in this case, this may just be like stuck left on because, you know, I didn't cut it completely off. And so it's just, it has like the stitches on it, and it's just kind of unnecessary. So you can, you know, kind of like get in the way and fall apart. So mm -hmm. cut it to be clean. Okay, and I have a question for you because I'm following along as you're doing it. Um, when I'm cutting the neckline, am I following the, the front we neck? Got, we haven't gotten to the neckline yet. <laughs> oh, my bad. I jumped ahead. Come on, Carrie Ann. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. So at this point, we're going to start to see the form of the bag. What you're, <laughs> the goal is that these are going to become the handles up here on the shoulders. And then this neckline is going to become the, where you like go in and put things. And we're going to sew the bottom to become the bottom of the bag. So I think this turns into what kind of bag you want. Do you want it to be more like, you know, like a bodega, like plastic shopping bag where it has, it's kind of more, you hold it with your hands and it mm -hmm. has like a wider mouth versus you could have like maybe a little more of like a shoulder situation. So you'd want to probably cut the armholes a little bit wider and slim out the handle part to make it more like a tote bag, you know? So I can kind of give you like both versions on my drawings. Let's go back to that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we can go back to my drawings first so you can see. You get like a nice different color. Okay. So I'm thinking if you want to have more like a bodega tote, you can leave this the same height and do it cut more deep this way, right? But if you want to have it more like a tote, you could cut these wider and lower. And you wanna cut this to be slimmer so it's more appropriate for your hand because right now it's quite wide for your hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it kind of depends on what you want. And I definitely would say, I'm like still perfecting the kind of use that I have, like different, different ones. Like you can kind of make like smaller ones that are for like, you know, like if you wanna get um, like your apples, like do a sack of apples or sack of like, different vegetables versus one that you're putting like all your groceries in, right? So you can kind of have like different versions. So I think I'm gonna go kind of like in the middle just so for like example sake. And um, let's see, do we have oh, <laughs> the electric globe? <laughs> 
I would like to say that the Electric Globe is from the 1970s. It's my father-in-law's. It's pretty OG. And um, do you guys do you guys remember Tall Tees from like the early 2000s, like rap fashion scene in Harlem? Yes. Those yes. would make some really fun bags. Just saying. <laughs> Those would be so legit. You could fit everything in them. Like going on vacation with a tall tea tote bag. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. See? Okay. This is, I love the like fashion aspect of this. That's the fun part of using like a cool t shirt. And then Hell it's like, yeah. like, do designer go to the grocery store and just stun on people? You know, that would be so fun. <laughs> Maybe I will make the Billionaire Boys Club one. <laughs> Like, I'm, yeah. I might have to send you some tea, Sid. <laughs> okay. okay, cool. All right, let's see what other people are saying. I'm trying to read the comments because, oh, yeah. Good scissors. Good scissors are definitely where it's at. So I would say, cute. like, first rule of trying to do anything with fabric, good scissors, and it's worth it. And don't let people cut anything else but fabric with them. Yeah, That's guard it. them. Guard them. <laughs> You're like... <laughs> Because it dulls okay. them and then your fabric isn't like butter anymore. Right. So to keep, now we can get to Carrie Ann's stuff. Um, I'm going to use chalk to, I didn't mention chalk before, but just because I want to like get a little more precise with my cutting. Um, I'm going to use some chalk to um, mark where I want to cut. You can use a pencil, anything. I mean, you can use a marker even if you want. I mean, really it's not, it depends on how vain you're being, but yeah. So, okay, let's see. So I think like for the handles, I feel like a good two and a half inches is like two and a half to three inches is a good width for each. So I'm just gonna do some marking just for fun. Three inches on the shoulders. Okay. And then just cut away. Let's see. So that, that's three and a half inches from the outside, correct? I centered them in the middle. I centered it like three. I did three this time, and I did it kind of just like right in the middle of the two. Okay. Um, but it doesn't really matter. You can kind of just make it up. And that's the best part about this kind of fabric. It's very forgiving and will just like stretch and move. So you kind of, you know, just like play with it a little bit. Don't be afraid is really the, the key thing. The best part about these types of projects is it gets you comfortable cutting fabric and not being afraid because it's a little scary when you first start. <laughs> And then in the end, if it doesn't work as a bag, you could also just wear it as Carrie Ann is wearing hers. Just do with your shoulders <laughs> Wait, Carrie Ann, are you wearing a, a failed bag right now? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm wearing a re up shirt. No, not a failed bag. It's just a successful custom t shirt, not a failed bag. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And we also had bleach this too, which is something we were talking about doing. Like Joe and you, like you got some old T-shirts. We can bleach them. We can cut them up, reinvent yeah. some stuff. That I would like. I think cutting like shirts like hers are so cool. I don't know if you've ever seen the ones that have like hearts or like slits in the back. Like we can totally do stuff like that. And it's a similar type of thing. You're just cutting shirts, you know. Yeah. It's so cool. let's face it, all the video chatting that we're doing nowadays, we really only need cool shirts, right? That's true. Like, what are pants anymore? Yeah, are nobody's wearing pants. Nobody's wearing pants. All right, cut, cut, cut. All right, so I've cut. Ooh, look at that. This is looking like a bag. Sid, Janice wants to know if you're measuring with your fingers or if you're using a ruler. Um, I and I did I did use a ruler. <laughs> Janice, um, she used a ruler. I did use a ruler, <laughs> but that's only because I love using rulers. But it's not um it's not necessary. I oh yeah, that's a great idea, Susan too. Susan brought up uh, 
like the sleeves that you cut off, you could also use that and like turn that into a mask. Too. Oh, Susan, that's a great so idea. That matches your bag. That's like a whole accessories kit. That's awesome. Yeah. Fashion now, people. Fashion. And, double layered. This is very easy for the, I'm sure you've seen the elastic band ones or like, you know, hair elastic ones. You just like fold and keep over, like kind of know so. I feel like that's a very good, because so it's like a couple layers, you know. So good. we can save these and we'll do a mass demonstration and show you how you can use them too. Yes. Yes. Um, I have been requested to sew masks, so we could put a whole demonstration of that together if you guys yeah. please. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. This is pretty fun. So I feel like this is gonna be, con I feel like that's good. And it's like probably big enough for me to, nice. Okay, so on to the sewing. Um. I'm gonna do it because I have a graphic on my t-shirt. I'm gonna put my t-shirt inside out and sew it to go back to the concept of seam allowance. Because you want your seam allowance when you, and your stitch line to be on the inside, just you know, so it looks nicer. So I'm gonna turn my shirt inside out so that the seam allowance is on the outside, as you can see here. And the idea is that we're just gonna sew right along the hem of the shirt which just because you guys love this so much at least david does <laughs> <laughs> oh no all my goodies just fell out um we're gonna sew right along here so i'm gonna hand sew with you guys because not everyone has a sewing machine and you shouldn't feel you can't make one of these if you don't have a sewing machine because this is quite easy. So I got my sewing needle here. Doesn't really matter what size. If you're not familiar with sewing or you don't, or you're not comfortable sewing very much, a nice big thick needle is nice and easy with a big hole at the end. It's fine. And I'm going to use this fun neon yellow thread because why not? So I would recommend usually for the project you're trying to sew, at least cutting enough thread to double the width or like the length of, that you're trying to sew. So I laid out my hem nice and flat and I'm gonna measure this out and cut it. Cool. I'm gonna thread my needle. And <laughs> what are all of these wild comments going on right now? <laughs> yeah, that thread measuring technique is super, super helpful. The thread, yeah. So yeah. you just you know, measure it. And then double is useful, especially cause like, like in this case, I'm gonna double back. I'm gonna sew across and then back again, just for like security sake, right? You don't want your watermelon falling out of your, your new bag. <laughs> right, right. <Come> on, <laughs> and then I would say, so like, if you've never sewn in your life, like I think that the first thing to do to get comfortable with sewing is not both ends together so that you don't lose your thread off your needle. Or, you know, because I think that's something that is like kind of a beginner thing. And it gets really frustrating if you have to keep like threading your needle. But once you've done that a few times, really, it's time. It's kind of like taking the training wheels off. It's time to only sew single thread and have the one end loose. So we're going to sew like that because we don't need training wheels in this sewing camp. And I'm going to teach you a fun way to make a knot because I think that's something that people struggle with a lot. And I learned from my quilting ladies when I was a little kid. So <laughs> you take the thread like this and you put it around, you wrap it around your finger, maybe four times like that. And you want to have your the end in the middle like this so that you have, see both ends, like, let's see, you have the one tail and the other tail. And then you twist off your finger which is, here we go, 
And you get this like squiggly thing at the end and you pull it to the end and you got a nice big knot. <laughs> so we can do it again. You wrap your finger, you get both tails in the, in the top there and you twist it off. And when you tighten it, you get a knot. Wait, can you show me that one more time? I've yeah, like always was... seen people sewing and doing this and I've always failed and I want to figure it out right now. Do it. Do it again. Sorry to me. Uh -huh. Have you asked me to cut your beautiful knot? Whatever. Thread is thread. Okay, here we go. I wish I had like, can you like see it better here? <laughs> <laughs> So you want to do, you're going to wrap it around your index finger okay. four, four times. And your, right. is the other end, are you holding it between your other two fingers or? I'm just kind of holding it with the wrap, see? Okay. Yeah. Right? So four or five, you know, a bunch. Okay. It depends. As you get better at it, you should only have to wrap it like twice. But, you know, this oh. is practice. Because you want your knot to be tiny. Like, in if you were a hand seamstress at a couture place, you would want your knot to be very tiny. But here, right. like, this doesn't matter. So this is the perfect time to practice, right, and learn new skills. And you want to make sure that it's, it's loosely wrapped. Like, you know, you don't want to be, like, cutting off your circulation here. So now you have it like this. And you twist, like, thumb to finger action like that. Right? Oh, I think I did it too it tight. Okay. Twists, it twists the thread like all around so you can kind uh -huh. of get there uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah and now you have like a little like goop at the end and you pull it to the bottom <gasps> you got it I did it <laughs> that was bad thank you <laughs> if I taught you nothing else in life I've taught you this <laughs> so much though. This is just the cherry on top right now. I think okay. I found, yeah, I found that when people ask me to learn how, like, you know, can you sew me a button? I'm like, you can sew a button. It's so easy. But I've learned that like making the knot at the end of the thread is what stops people from doing it because they don't know how to do that. But like, right. like the button part is not. That's not. You know, that's con the concept is easy. It's like, how do I get to that point? So here we go. David, can you sew a button? Um, probably not yet. Oh, we're well, going to teach you how to sew a button. <laughs> I'm down to learn. Down to learn. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank and you, Sid. That is the mama of the knot. And that's why oh. I encourage you, less, less times around your finger is better. But, um, you know, practice makes perfect. So, you know, we can... We can cover like other types of things to so, like practice more and like different types of stitching and then you can like feel more confident with it. Yeah. So back to the t-shirt bag. So I'm just going to sew right along basically the stitch line that's already there. Most t-shirts are like folded up about an inch and they have like a overlock stitch on the backside. So I'm just going to kind of like sew across that because it's a nice easy thing to follow. And in this case, you can just do like a really easy, like in and out, in and out, in and out stitch. The smaller, the better, but don't kill yourself. Like it shouldn't take more than 10 to 15 minutes to get you across. Or like for me, I'm hoping it'll take me less than five. Um, and you just kind of go in. I, I do a lot of hand stitching by building up. Instead of doing one stitch at a time, I do... I like to build up. So I like do a bunch in and out, in and out, in and out, almost like an accordion. And then you can pull it across. And you got a bunch of stuff. Oh, that's really cool. That saves a lot of time. It really does. I think, again, I think that, you know, people think you have to do one stitch at a time. You don't, especially in this kind of project. Like, let's do it quick, right? And no one's going to see this stuff. It's a really good way to um again like build up confidence with the sewing needle um and quick quick quickly shout out to janice for teaching you that not finger finger roll trick 
Like yes. Janet. I love that. She's like, if I'm here, girl, I need my props. <laughs> <laughs> I totally gave credit to the cool thing ladies as well. I'm sorry. I'll give you credit. My mom taught me how to sew when I was like four. I asked her how to use a sewing machine. And so she taught me. And it was very fun. And I never looked back. Yeah. Now, now you're teaching us. So yeah. thank you. Janice. It's true. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you, Janice, from all of us. Yeah. Thank you, Janice. She's in Albuquerque watching. Yes. Ooh, New Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Mexico. Great place. We got people all over. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. I'm almost across here. I, I know I'm a speed demon, but I'm also trying to, you know, I got to make it in my hour. So um, I'm also going to not go back across when I get to the end, but I would recommend doubling back. We cut two lengths of thread. It's worth it to go across and go back. Um, if you find that you want this bag to be a little more rounded at the bottom, it's very simple to just like pull the thread a little tighter and gather it a little. So I can show you here. And just get, give it a little more, you know, roundness at the bottom. I'll also show you if you wanted to have more of a squared bottom, I'll show you that next. And so it can kind of like sit and have like a flatter bottom to put like, you know, like things of like milk or broth or something like that. And it'll fit more like a corner. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. And I would love to see people's, I have a cheap knockoff rolling stone sheet. Yeah. So fun. I think, I personally think it would be really fun. Um, to do like black t-shirts, but then as you like bleach them, they'll get like weird and like cool. They'll look like cool t-shirts, like Carrie Ann's t-shirt. Which by the way, that was a compliment. <laughs> Cause we're making cool shopping bags. I just want to make sure we all know what's going on here. These are like, these are cool shopping bags you want to use. <laughs> this is a cool, cool. Bag. This yeah. is a cool like, shopping bag. You know, reusable shopping bags that they just, you know, that birthday people on them and stuff <laughs> look if you're gonna if you're gonna risk your life to go to the supermarket you might as well look good doing it you know yeah and let's be real that's like the one thing we all go out to do right now so, so true. <laughs> you guys should have seen me in costco the other day with my bathing ape <laughs> face mask <laughs> <laughs> i was like what is this what is life but at least it's relevant yeah. Okay, so I have finished. No rush, but guy, we've got a little friend, and we have a bag. Look at it; it's so fun. Oh wow! See the 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 whole thing in the frame. I want to see top to bottom in the frame if you yeah. can. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Can you see? Let me back up. Maybe it's very large. Yeah, that's great. That's like yeah. a perfect grocery bag size. It actually is. I brought some lemons. So you can Does like... this one fit on your, like, over your shoulder? Can you show us how, like, the measurements would fit what? on you? This was an oh, extra yeah. large men's shirt, so it's, like, pretty sweet. Right? With some, with my friends in there. It's cute. You can go buy your bananas, so you make your banana pancakes that we saw earlier. Oh, yes. yeah, those were amazing. Right? Oh, yeah, really, really great. Wait, so so let me ask you something. If I'm shopping for, you know, particularly heavy things like canned goods, watermelons, would that stitch be enough or would I need to double stitch it, just do the same thing again? Or what's a good way to, like, reinforce it so that if I'm walking home with my groceries, it doesn't, like, rip out the bottom and, you know, you look like that guy? That is valid. So, like, I do want to stress, like, this is obviously just like any bag. You don't want, like, you don't want to test the limits here. Um, but, yeah, I would at least, if you're hand stitching, I would at least double back and do twice. Maybe even three times. 
Um, I also would say, so like, I was just going to, I was telling you about how I can square it off. I think that's another good way to help distribute the weight. So it's not just on that seam. So I'll teach you guys how to like, just quickly, um, square off the corners and make that kind of like bottom space. But ideally a sewing machine would be the strongest if you're like worried about it. Um, yeah. Wait, but, but. But, like, that's the only thing you need to do if you're, you know, just hoarding toilet paper or something. Like, if you're just carrying, like, goods, like, one stitch is enough. Totally. And I actually would say, like, so because we cut and did not stitch these other parts, these are probably a little weaker than the bottom. The stitch will hold. If you're if you're using, I mean, I would say any thread. Like, this is going to hold. Because there's, like, this other seam allowance here. There's, like, four layers. Like, it's strong. Um, but you know, the handles, like they are just cut. So after a while they could stretch and get a little distressed. I mean, this could, you know, depending on how much you're chopping, how much you're putting in it and how many times you're bleaching it over and over, like eventually it will start to fall apart, but you know, it gives it life because probably this t-shirt you, it's just sitting in your drawer doing nothing and you're never wearing it or you're wearing it once a year when you do one craft project. Right. So (laughs) This is kind of like a nice way, instead of throwing it away, especially again, like the white tees, you just give it like a little longer of a life. So. I love it. I love it. Also, mom, if you're watching, um, your son is broke. Send me some seam allowance, please. (laughs) (laughs) With the dad jokes. You've got all the dad jokes. Okay. got them all. So one last thing I'm going to teach you guys is like how to make it a little more flat on the bottom. So if you go into one corner here, we've got like the one corner of the, of the bottom of the t-shirt, you know, I stitched along this line and we have this, this guy here. We also have the side seam. What you want to do is pull the two sides apart and make it so that the side seam and your seam that you stitched along are face are touching each other. So you're kind of making a triangle with it. This is incredibly hard to describe, but I'm going to try. So see, I have my side seam here, right? We have the triangle and I'm gonna put the two pieces together. Like this. Uh, you know what I mean? You know what's yeah. happening here? Yeah. I'm going to try to pin it and then mark it so I can really show you guys. And what you're going to do is stitch a straight line to make a triangle. And you did that before you flipped it? Yes, this is on the inside. Yeah, don't flip it on the outside. It's on the inside of the bag. So we have here, there's the hem and we have the side seam and I've brought them together in a like, it's kind of like origami, right? So they are both like down the center and touching each other, kissing. And we're going to stitch across here. And what it does, I'll show you on the outside. is it squares off the bag so that you have a little more of a three-dimensional shape, very similar to a shopping bag from like a grocery store or bodega. See how it has like this, the little seam across down? Yeah. Do you see it like, it has that like three dimension to it? Yeah. That looks dope. So yeah. And you do that to both sides and it has, you know, it, it leaves like a little triangle on the inside, but you know, it doesn't really matter. You can cut it off if you want. So, so not only does it make it look cooler, but it also makes the weight distributed more evenly. So you can like carry more things without risking it breaking open on you. That's, that's like, awesome. Yeah. And it makes it three dimensions. So like, you know, with this one, with this side, it's just flat, right? Like it's two dimensional, like a piece of paper. But this side, it's more like a box. So you could put like, you know, like a box, like a box of milk or something, right? And it'll like sit more snug in there and like actually sit on the bottom versus 
poking out, like trying to make a two dimensional item three dimensional. Yes, I love boxes of milk. <laughs> cartons, cartons of milk. <laughs> we don't buy milk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it also makes it look not like just a t shirt, it like elevates it a little. It does. Yeah. it does. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I think it definitely, you know, so we're again, we're like these aren't just, we're not just making, you know, uncool bags. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is the new fashion. <laughs> cool bags. Okay. Oh, yay. Okay. I'm glad other people are seeing this. It's hard to describe that but that little nook, but I do think it's, it's important. It makes it look cool and work better. I guess in the last few minutes, are there any questions? Do you guys have any other tips or things you'd like to know about? Or who's going to make this? Yeah. Also, who's going to make this and send me your photos. <laughs> yeah, a couple people said they're going to try it. And I've already asked to send in photos of the finished product so we can get, um, you know, we want to see what what people are doing at home. Also, I'm just I'm honestly most excited to see what T-shirts people pick. Right, right. That's gonna be great. Yeah, I think like you know it's so fun. And if you don't have like fun ones, you can always like flash tie dye them or something like that, like to make them fun. Like yeah, I don't know. this is such a great experiment project. So if there's something you've always wanted to try but you don't want to mess up, you can't mess this up. You can't. Right. It's so easy. And like, yeah. The t-shirt I used, I had tie-dyed it before. So it's got like some cool texture to it too. So it's like, Perfect. it's fun. Yeah. yeah. I love that. You could totally make this out of a sweatshirt. Anything that's knit. I wouldn't do it out of like a sweater or anything. Like, especially if you're trying, like for this purpose, what we've been talking about this whole time, you want to be able to wash it, high heat bleach it. So do it, you know, if you're cotton or polyester cotton blend, cotton is like the strongest and the best and the easiest to wash. It's natural, etc. cetera. Um, but kind of like anything goes, you could probably make this out of any shirt if you really wanted. There's no rules in quarantine times. No, there's no rules. Yeah. Look at all these. Carrie Ann, can we see where 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 are you in the process, Carrie Ann? I just finished my bag, flipped it around. I did one little corner, like Sid said, but let me back up a bit. That's a big old shirt. It says Key West on it. <laughs> a, a lovely place to visit. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty excited. Look at it about vacation while you shop with your mask on and everything yeah, like with my matching <laughs> mask like this is gonna be fun one day you know i'm ready yeah this is oh, great previewing a next episode um well Sid, thank you so much for joining us and teaching us that that was like amazingly helpful and i think is super useful especially for right now when um you know we're caught between a rock and a hard place and going to a grocery store where there's no bags allowed, but um, also you can't bring things home and they won't let you bring reusable bags. So, um, you know, kind of a catch 22 there and you've, you've 20 us out. So really appreciate you teaching us that. I hope um, everybody has learned. And if anybody's going to create their own, please, please, please take pictures, send them to us. We want to see your bag and um, we'll be back tomorrow with a, new episode of making things a house of korea make things a house of korea making things a house of korea thank you guys so much um stay tuned later today we've got some more fun programming coming um four o'clock and eight o'clock tonight we've got some other fun stuff hope to see you there hope you had fun now and uh we'll be back soon thanks guys bye bye bye, bye.